So in our first episode of neuroscience series, right, we are going to discuss about the reticular formation. Now the reticular formation is basically a group of various nuclei located in the brainstem, right? So we can divide it in the upper brainstem and the lower brainstem. Now studying the reticular formation is very typical task, right? So in our today's episode, we are going to discuss about mainly the application aspect of the reticular formation which is the most important way we can learn about it. So, our first uh, application of the reticular activity system or reticular formation is the sleep-wake cycle, right? The arousal system which is very important and it's very important in the clinical management of impaired consciousness where for the treatment, prognostic values and the management we need the knowledge about its reticular formation. So, it's a very important topic, right? So, it's Basically, reticular formation is a group of various nuclei, various cell groups located in the brainstem, definitely. So, it's just like a Pandora box. It's, it has various functions. So, only best way we can study about it is its application part. So, let us see a model which will help us to understand its application better in sleep wake cycle. So, friends, I have the model of brainstem uh, which you can see here. Now to orient you, this is the column of the spinal cord, right? This is the section where the middle oblongata is converting into the spinal cord, right? Now you can see here, as we move upwards, now you can identify the pons by the transverse fibers as you can see here, right? So this is pons and above it we can see the mid -brain. Above the pons we can see the cerebral peduncle right which is the entire part of the midbrain so this all is the part of midbrain above these transverse fibers so we have midbrain cerebral peduncle that is on the both side then we have the pons then we can see here the medulla right and then we have the column of spinal cord now friends in the brain we know the reticular uh, formation is actually a mashup of the various nuclei so here we can see the column of nuclei there are three columns of nuclei right longitudinally we are seeing right so this is the midline which is the raphe nuclei right this is the median nuclei and likewise we have the medial and the lateral so there are three columns of nuclei so importantly we need to uh, see that this is midline is the this one raphe nuclei this is a reddish as lateral medial and this is lateral nucleus side right now identifying this box now what this box indicates this is one of our uh, part of raphe nuclei which we are interested in that is raphe nuclei which is involved in the reticular system in the sleep alertness cycle right and this is the these blue nuclei are the locus coriolis right so these are present in the pons right so you can see that here it is a lower brainstem and this is a, the upper brainstem figure now the scientist frederick bremer decided to experiment on the cat's brain so he made three sections right there was one section here actually the first section was made above this right you can see the zig zigzag lines where the cut is made so here you can see the cut right first cut so it was caudal to the forebrain right just anterior to the locus coriolis and the second cut was done here right which left with no effect on the sleep alertness cycle right you can see the second cut now the third cut was done by uh, other scientists after this work so you can see here very important that this cut is between this part of raphe nuclei and this part of locus coriolis right so we'll see in the observation what uh, importance did it carry right now also to orient you uh, just to make you yourself comfortable with the fibers we can see these are the fibers which are carrying the raphe nuclei right so we can see these will project in the forebrain right this all is projecting the forebrain and this is the fibers which will be projected in the forebrain right or in the various communicate in the thalamus hypothalamus subthalamus various places right so this is the locus coriolis fibers and this is the 
raffinucleus fibers so these are the reticular actors ascending reticular system fibers now we will see the observations now so friends we are representing this model onto the whiteboard to have a crystal clear explanation right so these are the fibers from the locus coriolis and these are the fiber from the raffinucleus which is representing this group right now friends frederick bremer who was a neuroscientist he performed certain experiments on the cat's brain right so he decided to have two cuts actually the second cut uh, was done by other scientists so the only cut uh, which he did was the this first and third cut actually these are named according to the uh, this descending series so let us see the observations which are the most cornerstone part of this research now this is the locus coriolis this blue and this is the other group of the raffinucleus now as we discussed that raffinucleus extends throughout the brain stem so this is a part of raffinucleus pertaining to the lower brain stem right so after the first cut as you see can you see this is the caudal to the uh, forebrain and all these fibers right this fiber and this fiber has been cut there is no synapse or no activity of neural migration taking place from this to this side so what will we see we see that the cat is constantly sleeping plus no walking now this observation is not so important than this one here we see that the cat is unable to uh, the cat is sleeping constantly so here we can observe that the arousal system of the reticular formation is not function right so we can see uh, either this fiber or either this fiber is responsible for the arousal system right so here we are not able to distinguish in the first cut now the second cut done by the scientist which is this in that he sees that there is normal sleep pick cycle so this is normal sleep pick cycle in the third cut which clearly demonstrate that these two group of nuclei present in the reticular formation right they are functioning normally and there has been no cut from this neural area so the neural migration is taking place well above the cut so these two cuts helps us to target the observation study that is the target the basic nuclei which are responsible for the sleep wake activity in the brain stem we now we can see between the first cut and the third cut there are the nuclei present which we are uh, trying to deal with right which we want to find out which nuclei is responsible for the sleep wake cycle now after the two years uh, the other scientist did a second cut now the cut was uh, coincidentally above this raffinucleus nuclear right so you, the second cut you can see here this is going from above the raffinucleus nuclear and below the locus coriolis now the interesting observation we see that there is constant arousal constant arousal the cat is constantly aroused there is no signs of sleep so it clearly proves that there is a neural migration which is responsible from this area which can, uh, there are many neurons which are serotonergic right cholinergic adrenergic we'll discuss it about later but these types of neurons are present in this group of nu nuclei which are responsible for the neural migration which ultimately makes the brain sleep so it's a deactivating system right so it uh, overview us about that this raffinucleus is a deactivating system which is responsible for the sleep so this cut has been there so those, there has been no sleep in simple words we can say that the locus coriolis is a 
positive activity that's it the ascending reticular activating system right and this is responsible for the deactivating system right ascending reticular deactivating system and after having the second cut right this is having no effect on the cortex thereby the cat was constantly aroused so this is the basic overview of the reticular formation in the sleep wake cycle so it will help us to understand its various significance in the clinical aspects which we have already discussed that there is a impaired consciousness we need to have a, a sound knowledge of that so that a basic theme of treatment protocol can be applied right so in this aspect we have discussed this and in other videos we are going to discuss about the other application aspects of the reticular formation thank you for viewing this video goodbye